All right, folks, we have a few stories we're going to talk about today. One of them is related to Tears of the Kingdom, of course, where it potentially might become or has a chance to become the fastest selling Nintendo game of all time. But before we dive into that, we have to talk a little bit about something that's happening at Nintendo of Europe in regards to Joy-Cons. Also, a brand new venture that was just launched by Nintendo that could improve future video games. Oh my gosh, we need to talk about this stuff because after all, we're not just a Zelda YouTuber, (laughs) everyone. We're actually a YouTube channel that covers a bunch of stuff about Nintendo news and all that. News has just been a bit light lately, but we do have a couple stories to add on today. We'll put timestamps down below if you want to skip around in the video. Now, that being said, I want to remind you we are on our road to 100,000 subscribers. Thank you so much. We just hit 95,000. I'm so, my mind is blown at how quickly this channel is growing. If you guys would like to join, I would really appreciate it if you would subscribe. If we do get to 100,000 before Tears of the Kingdom, which almost seems like a formality at this point, we just gained 2,000 subscribers in the last three days. It's insane. Anyways, uh, we'll just give away a Tears of the Kingdom Uh, Nintendo Switch OLED will also give away uh, a collector's edition of Tears of the Kingdom as well, a pin from PAX East, and more. I'm trying to add more to the giveaway pool because we're growing super fast, and I want to make sure that I can give back as much to the community as possible. Uh, So stay tuned for that because at this point, we'll probably have some big uh, giveaway event happening either at the end of April or May for the 100K goal. All right. So first, let's get into our first story here, and it deals with Nintendo of Europe. So we finally get them making a statement, and it's really interesting how they made this statement because it has to do with Joy-Cons, and essentially, they are going to repair out-of-warranty Joy-Cons for free. This appeared on the Nintendo of Europe website in their support section, which is kind of strange because they didn't actually formally announce this the way Nintendo of America did years ago, but it is nice to see that they are doing this. Now, this doesn't cover all of Europe, but there are very specific areas that it does cover. So the UK, the EEA, and Switzerland are all going to be covered under this new policy, which does bring the Nintendo of European policy in line with North America, Latin America, and France, which already was repairing Joy-Cons for free. Now, we all know that these Joy-Con repairs are typically to address Joy-Con drift. However, it will cover pretty much anything that happens to your Joy-Con. So if your joystick just straight up breaks, as an example, the buttons break, the triggers, it just covers all of that. So that's really, really nice that they decided to do this so late in the Switch's life cycle. I hope people take advantage of it. A lot of us have bought multiple sets of Joy-Con at this point, but hey, you can now send in your old ones, get them fixed up, get them back almost brand new without having to do any self-repairs. Not that the self-repairs are super difficult, but our ribbon cables and stuff are involved. So you know what? Having Nintendo do it, if they break it, they'll just give you a new one. So that's pretty neat. And so, yeah, I don't know. It's just nice to have that policy in place. Next up, Nintendo and Denna have formally opened up their new joint venture called Nintendo Systems. Now, they announced this back in November of last year, and we weren't really sure what this was supposed to be, but while we we aren't really sure what the end result of the venture is going to be, Nintendo seems to be in this collaboration to make their understanding of modern technologies better, and in particular when it comes to internet-based play. So in theory, this could see them do more modern features, or updates on future platforms and games, and obviously within the mobile space as well. Now, they do have some text on the official website here they launched today, and we're just going to read it so you can kind of see, you know, what Nintendo and Denna are announcing publicly. Now, this is a translated version, so obviously Japanese to English isn't perfect, but let's go into it. It says Nintendo Systems was born in April of 2023, led by a team of engineers from Nintendo and Denna to create a system that facilitates the delivery of Nintendo's entertainment to our customers. Amidst the many technological innovations in the world, while valuing the spirit of originality and flexibility, members with various strengths engage in lively discussions and work faithfully to create systems with the aim of achieving great results that cannot be achieved by one person alone. The technology surrounding the internet is changing at a dizzying pace and increasing in complexity every day. In this context, Nintendo Systems will leverage the relationship of trust between Nintendo and Denna that has been nurtured through a partnership over seven years to create new innovations for the world 
driven by Nintendo's originality and Denna's knowledge of technology. The development of technology surrounding entertainment is expected to continue to grow. We will continue to take on the challenge of bringing smiles to the faces of as many customers as possible through Nintendo's entertainment by incorporating a diverse range of technologies. So as I said, this seems to be a research group uh, that is really aimed at modernizing Nintendo's internet infrastructure and, and, and their systems in play, maybe even taking into user accounts and other stuff. So I'm really happy to see Nintendo investing in that. And Denna does have a lot of experience with it, although in a different space, they still are pretty up to date on modern technologies. Now, this is a nice reminder that Nintendo is also expanding in other ways as well. They are building a second building next to their main headquarters in Japan that is literally dedicated to nothing but research and development for video games. And that actually completes in 2027. And if you don't think this is a serious investment for Nintendo, they spent nearly $40 million on the land alone for the building. So that, yeah, I mean, Nintendo knows what's up. Also, they are opening up a museum next year in Japan, which I think is pretty nifty as well. Hopefully we'll get to see some rare Nintendo gems there. Now, our last story today, and probably the one you clicked on for because it's our headline title, is the... The, the, the sales of Tears of the Kingdom. So I've been following pre-order sales, and we, and we did an update on this not too long ago about how pre-orders are exploding, and it's helped the Nintendo Switch get back to number one in Japan. And this is all true, but the sales seem to be getting even crazier and crazier. So in certain sections on Amazon, you'll see that the top three best-selling things are The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, then The Legend of Zelda Switch OLED model, oh, and The Legend of Zelda Collector's Edition. Uh, that's crazy to me to see that the Collector's Edition, there wasn't even that many copies, and yet it still jumped to the top. But then even if you go to the overall bestsellers, which will then throw in all the digital codes for games and stuff, you'll see PlayStation, Xbox, 1 and 2, you know, their $10 gift cards in the digital spots. But then you're seeing Tears of the Kingdom at number 3. Then you'll see the Nintendo Switch eShop cards, some Roblox cards. And then all of a sudden, look, there's the Nintendo Switch OLED model. Oh, look, there's the Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom Collector's Edition. And then if you scroll down a little further, there's the dang Nintendo Switch Pro Controller, which is probably only not higher than the Tears of the Kingdom one because they're sold out. So they literally can't, but it is outselling the Mario bundle uh, for Nintendo Switch and pretty much every other Switch game there is. So I find this really fascinating uh, watching these this ebb and flow and watching the sales continue to climb, obviously with the Tears of the Kingdom, you know, hasn't sold out yet. Might be really hard to get physically at launch, we'll see. But it hasn't sold out yet, and they're continuing to take pre-orders as it climbs the charts. I do find this fascinating because last year, Nintendo set a new record with Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, a dual release where it became the fastest selling Nintendo game of all time with its opening launch weekend moving 10 million units. They have never seen that happen in the history of Nintendo. And obviously it went on to have an incredible first six weeks. Now, I don't know that Tears of the Kingdom can top the six week sales. After all, you're, you're competing against like people buying two versions of the same game. But what I will say is if there was a game that potentially could open at the same pace or slightly ahead on opening weekend, it's going to be Tears of the Kingdom. Need I remind you, Breath of the Wild opened back when Switch launched by outselling the Nintendo Switch itself. There were more Switch copies of Breath of the Wild sold at launch than Switches actually existed at that time. That is utterly insane. That's how much the fervor for Tears of the Kingdom, or I should say, that's how much the fervor for Breath of the Wild was back then, and it looks like Tears of the Kingdom might even have more going for it, with pre-order numbers even higher than what was happening with Breath of the Wild. So it is possible, it is not inconceivable, that for launch weekend, somehow Tears of the Kingdom could exceed Pokemon Scarlet and Violet and become the new fastest-selling Nintendo game of all time, which I would love if that would happen since... I presume Tears of the Kingdom isn't going to have all the technical brokenness issues that uh, Scarlet and Violet had. Like I, by the way, I really enjoy Scarlet and Violet, and I'm not knocking those games. They're some of my favorite Pokemon games actually ever made, and the ending to the stories in those games are just very un-Pokemon-like in my mind. Very, 
unique. I, I really enjoyed the story. But what I will say about Tears of the Kingdom is it's probably going to be a 90-plus review game. I don't know how high in the 90s it's going to be. And so to have that game be the fastest-selling Nintendo game ever, to me, would just be a massive achievement, not only for the Zelda franchise, but also for Nintendo, to have one of your best-rated games ever also be one of your fastest-selling ever. Now, again, it doesn't mean I think it'll hit 20 million in six weeks. Let's say it, it gets 11 million in opening weekend. It could slow down after that, and maybe it only sells 5 million over the next four weeks because sometimes sales can be front loaded. But I, I still think that would be extremely impressive for Nintendo. And the more we're seeing these pre order numbers go up, the more I think this is going to happen. Now, again, these are just pre orders at a single retail outlet. We, we don't necessarily know what the numbers are going to be like everywhere we've seen obviously in japan that it's become way more pre-ordered than breath of the wild and other nintendo games but that's again we don't have this sort of data from all retailers because not all retailers publish this data but amazon's always been a pretty good barometer to predict sales uh and you know what with how soon this is, became a top seller and how long it's remained a top seller and how it continues to remain a top seller because these sales are updated daily Damn, guys, I'm pretty excited for The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom and what's going to happen. I Don't be surprised if it's breaking some sort of sales records that opening weekend. If not, breaking records for best or quickest selling Nintendo game ever, breaking records for fastest selling Zelda game ever, I think is pretty much a shoo-in. Anyways, guys, let me know what you think about this down in the comments below. I am Nathaniel Rufflejance from Nintendo Prime. Did you guys finally like me getting some additional news stories in there? I know some of you longtime followers have been like, Nate, when were you going to talk about more than just Zelda? I know, guys. Like, I get it. Zelda is the hot topic. We're obviously hitting on the hot trending topic. I got a lot to talk about because I really enjoy Zelda, and I have a lot of things I can say about it. I used to run Zelda fan sites for a living. I did it for nearly 20 years. So talking about Zelda every day is not hard for me to do, especially for an upcoming game. But also... Guys, we are a Nintendo YouTuber, not just a Zelda YouTuber. I know some people have been calling me a Zelda YouTuber lately, and I get it. Uh, but no, we actually cover all news for Nintendo. There just hasn't been a lot noteworthy besides the Mario movie. And yeah, early impressions of the Mario movie are good, but that's about it. Uh, there, there isn't a ton else happening out there right now, and that makes sense because Nintendo's massively promoting the Mario movie, and they're massively promoting Zelda. Everything else is sort of falling by the wayside. Of course, that's going to change. I presume we're going to start getting an advertising for, uh, you know, Reboot Camp coming up, right? Advance Wars 1 plus 2 Reboot Camp. Don't forget that comes out this month. We'll probably get a trailer, maybe. <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, there was an interview, by the way, for Kirby. I guess we'll throw this in as a bonus story. Uh, the Kirby director of the franchise, uh, Shinya Kumazaki, did an interview at the Game Developers Con uh, Conference at IGN. And just of note, he was sort of mentioning that they now view 3D Kirby as something they're going to do moving forward, but they don't want people to think that's the only thing they're going to do. Uh, and they said they kind of got comfortable with 3D Kirby uh, gameplay around the time that Kirby's Blowout Blast, which came out on the 3DS in 2016, that sort of made them realize maybe we should do some more 3D Kirby stuff, but that we shouldn't expect everything coming out of HAL and the rest to just be 3D, uh, that they're still going to be sticking with 2D Kirby as well, the side-scrolling stuff. So you, you can kind of see it going back and forth. I also think this admits that 3D Kirby takes a little bit longer to make. So yeah, there's going to be future 3D Kirby games. I think that's the big takeaway here. It's just not going to be the only kind of Kirby games we get. So don't expect a Forgotten Land style Kirby game every time. But don't think that they forgot about that and they're not going to go back to it. Because, of course, they are. It's the best-selling Kirby game ever. So, yeah, I'm just excited to see more 3D Kirby in the future. And you know what? It's nice to have that mix of 3D and traditional Kirby. I, I think that's a good way to go about it. Just like with Zelda here, I do think we're going to get top-down Zelda again at some point as well. And I think that's a good mix of having the Grezzo work on top-down while the main Zelda team works on the next big, big game after Tears of the Kingdom. So, anyways, guys, thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll catch you in the next video.